Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time here. What I'm going to talk about today is fertilization of plants. Now I know we all have heard it and talked about it on other channels about fertilizing your plants and anytime someone comes up to me and says they're having all kinds of problems with their aquarium, it usually boils down to fertilization of plants. So I got proof that fertilization screws up your aquarium if not used correctly. Now, what I mean by that is the live big minimum law means that if one thing is at a minimum, the plants will not grow as well as they should. So if a lot of people will say about fertilization, I always tell them, if you're going to fertilize, you really should have CO2. Otherwise, the fertilization is going to may overwhelm the tank and you'll wind up with algae uh, along with maybe plant growth. And then you're going to be fighting algae. Well, here I got a proof. So in the aquarium, the goldfish aquarium, everything's looking good. And I'm going to show you photographs to prove what I mean. So everything's looking good. All the plants are nice and clean, been injecting hydrogen peroxide in it every day at noon. And everything, all the algae problems that I did have were gone. So I decided to add some iron. Yes, the bottle says iron and it doesn't say there's any phosphates in it, doesn't say there's any nitrates in it. It just says it's iron. And uh, I think it's sea chem. So I decided that, oh, well, maybe this will help the Anubias green up darker green. So I added a little bit of iron to the aquarium. Now, I do a water change every week, so I wasn't really worried that the aquarium would be sitting for a month or whatever, uh, two weeks to a month without having a water change with that iron in there. Well, as you can see by the pictures, you will see a before and an after. Within a week, within a week, the plants got covered full of algae just by adding the iron in the aquarium. Everything was clean, but by adding that iron, it accelerated the growth of algae also, especially on the Anubias that you can see the Anubias now, which was nice and clean, is now full of algae. You know, I keep telling people these, these, these other stations keep telling you, oh, you got to have fertilizer and they will Keep telling you you have to add fertilizer. Fertilizer is good if you're using CO2. But if you're adding it, you can wind up, just like happened to my tank within a week, have an algae problem, and you're sitting there scratching your head saying, why do I have this algae problem? Well, are you fertilizing? Did you add any fertilizer to your aquarium to upset the balance, that ecosystem that you're trying to create? And then most times people say, well, yeah, I put tablets in or yeah, I, I, I put some in. The plants weren't looking good. That's all it took. Because if the plants are not photosynthesizing to 100%, they can't utilize the fertilization that you're giving them. Yes, they will utilize it to a small point because it is there, but algaes will utilize it a lot faster because it now has an abundance of something that it did not have. In my case, iron. It now has an abundance of iron, which is one of the most important elements to give plants in an aquatic environment is iron. So if that is one of the most important elements, iron, you could see what happened because algae can also use that. The pictures show now this is going to take weeks to get straightened out because I have to do water changes to get what iron is left in there. 
Did the iron have something in it? I do not know. Manufacturers didn't list whether it had phosphates in it, whether it had nitrates in it, but that's all I did. So think about it. Before you start adding fertilization, just because someone wants you to buy a product constantly, think about what you're doing. And if you wind up with problems, you can pretty well now investigate and go back to what you did. And it's probably going to be the fertilization that you put into your aquarium that has now an abundance of nutrients in the water that the plants cannot use or can use very little of those nutrients. Because a lot of people, a lot of people, they come up and say, oh, my plants don't look good. I, I've been squirting in some, some nutrients into the aquarium. And now I'm starting to get beard algae or hair algae or string algae or whatever they're starting to get now. And it could be because you're throwing off that ecosystem. See, people just don't seem to understand there's a balance. And you, if you throw that balance off, just, just like the antique aquarium with the, you know, with the uh, shrimp in it and it has the guppies in it and it's sitting right in front of a window, but it's not full of algae. But then I don't put anything in that aquarium. It just has the moss and has some of the other plants that were came from the seed that should have died over a year ago because some brilliant Einstein told me that, oh, this plant, it doesn't last long. It only lives a year. Well, I don't know. The rocket scientist that told me that was 100% wrong. Uh, the plant is growing and propagating, and it doesn't look like it's going to leave anytime soon, that aquarium. So if it died on them within a year, well, that was their problem. It wasn't the plant's problem because I still have it in two of my aquariums. The plants grow like a banshee in my aquariums, and I'm not even adding any fertilizer. What they get is from what the food gives them. But because the 90 gallon or the antique aquarium are so well balanced that if I do add iron to the 90, nothing happens to it. But then on the other hand, both of those aquariums have something that the goldfish aquarium, the 40 gallon breeder doesn't have. And that is CO2 is being injected into both of those tanks. That's right. I got CO2 tank going into the 90 gallon and I got CO2 going into the aquarium that sits right in front of the light to help the growth of the plants and the moss that's in there and that's getting CO2. I use the same tank and just put a line going to both. So that is the difference when I put something in these tanks, even iron, I put iron into the antique tank, nothing happens. I put iron into the 90 gallon, nothing happens, but they're using CO2. And that's something that if the plants lack that, they can't utilize the nutrients that you're giving them. That's basically what I'm saying. So those two tanks are nice and clean, even when I add iron, but boom, I add iron to the goldfish aquarium without CO2 immediately. As you can see, LG took over. So, I thought I would do this video to have a little caution when you're using these chemicals, thinking that they are going to do fertilizers, I should say, uh, that they're going to do great things for your aquarium and you're not using CO2, you may be in for an algae problem. You may have to back off of those or don't use them at all because your plants may be getting enough nutrients from the aquarium itself, that you do not have to keep adding more to it. Now, I know what people are going to say, yeah, but my plants don't look good. Well, if you're that concerned, if you're really that concerned about your plants, then get a CO2 system and add it to your aquarium. Otherwise, uh, your plants are going to grow extremely slow without it. And they won't accelerate it. You know, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there where they admit they'll set up a brand new aquarium and they'll add CO2 to it immediately to accelerate the growth of the plants. They do that on purpose. Then once the plants have accelerated and they're growing real good, then they can stop the CO2. 
and they will admit it. Yes, we do that to help the plant growth real fast. And then the hobbyist watches these, and if they don't catch on to that's what they're doing, they assume they can do the same thing without CO2, and it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. They don't get the accelerated growth, and they're scratching their head wondering, well, I have light, and, and, and I have plenty of uh, a fertilizer. Well, why, why is my tank not doing what theirs have done? Why big minimum law? You have to have the CO2 involved. And they do it on purpose. You know, they accelerate that growth. If, if, you're, if you're really into plants, you're really going to need CO2 to accelerate the growth and really have a tank that prospers. Just like my 90 gallon, about mm, once a year, maybe once every eight months, I cut the plants down just like a lawnmower, cut it right down to the gravel. A lot of the plants get all chopped down. And guess what? They all just come back because that's using CO2. They have plenty of nutrients where you can cut down the plants when they get too tall, stringy, whatever, because the leaves are getting so old that uh, maybe you'll see some algae growing on the real old leaves. I chop them down and they grow right back. So it's just something to think about that I wanted to warn people because a lot of people who are new to the hobby, the first thing people try to sell them is you need fertilizer for your plants. No, you don't need fertilizer for your plants. Well, my plants don't look good. There's a lot of reasons why your plants don't look good. And one of them could be the lack of CO2. Okay, but nobody wants to look at that part because, well, that's expensive to get the tank and to get a, you know, regulator. And then I got to get the tank full. And then I have to exchange it every so many months. Me, I go like, eight months before I have to fill up my tank of CO2. And they, they don't want to do it. It's a hassle. Well, that's if, if look it up, the Libby Minimal Law, if it will tell you that if your plants aren't growing, if your plants aren't looking good, it's usually CO2. Now, if I would have had CO2 in that 40 gallon breeder, would it have done that? Would it have accelerated the plants that have been sitting in there and really not growing much at all? Yes, the CO2 would have accelerated those plants so they could have utilized the iron. I mean, like I said, I put the same iron in a tank that faces a window and gets direct sunshine and there's not one bit of algae on the plants. And you would figure those plants would be covered full of algae but the Goldfish Aquarium is. So it's just a little caution. So this is Dr. Novak. Until next time, happy fish keeping. And just remember, too much of a good thing is not sometimes a good thing, especially when it comes to an aquatic environment. So until next time, happy fish keeping.